Marie-Joseph Paul-Yves Rock Gilbert du Mottier, Marquis de Lafayette, in the U.S., often known simply as Lafayette, was a French aristocrat and military officer who fought for the United States in the American Revolutionary War, a close friend of George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, and Thomas Jefferson. Lafayette was a key figure in the French Revolution of 1789 and the July Revolution of 1830. Born in Chavagnac, in the province of Auvergne in south-central France, Lafayette came from a wealthy landowning family. He followed its martial tradition, and was commissioned an officer at age 13. He became convinced that the American cause in its Revolutionary War was noble, and traveled to the New World seeking glory in it. There, he was made a major general, though initially the 19-year-old was not given troops to command. Wounded during the Battle of Brandywine, he still managed to organize an orderly retreat. He served with distinction in the Battle of Rhode Island. In the middle of the war, he returned home to lobby for an increase in French support. He again sailed to America in 1780, and was given senior positions in the Continental Army. In 1781, troops in Virginia under his command blocked forces led by Cornwallis until other American and French forces could position themselves for the decisive siege of Yorktown. Lafayette returned to France and, in 1787, was appointed to the Assembly of Notables convened in response to the fiscal crisis. He was elected a member of the Estates General of 1789, where representatives met from the three traditional orders of French society, the clergy, the nobility, and the commoners. He helped write the Declaration of the Rights of Man of the Citizen, with the assistance of Thomas Jefferson. After the storming of the Bastille, Lafayette was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard, and tried to steer a middle course through the French Revolution. In August 1792, the radical factions ordered his arrest. Fleeing through the Austrian Netherlands, he was captured by Austrian troops and spent more than five years in prison. Lafayette returned to France after Napoleon Bonaparte secured his release in 1797, though he refused to participate in Napoleon's government. After the Bourbon Restoration of 1814, he became a liberal member of the Chamber of Deputies a position he held for most of the remainder of his life. In 1824, President James Monroe invited Lafayette to the United States as the nation's guest during the trip. He visited all 24 states in the Union at the time, meeting a rapturous reception. During France's July Revolution of 1830, Lafayette declined an offer to become the French dictator. Instead, he supported Louis Philippe as king, but turned against him when the monarch became autocratic. Lafayette died on 20 May 1834, and is buried in Picpus Cemetery in Paris, under soil from Bunker Hill. For his accomplishments in the service of both France and the United States, he is sometimes known as the hero of the two worlds. Early life. Lafayette was born on 6 September 1757 to Michel Louis Christophe Rock Gilbert Paulette du Mottier, Marquis de Lafayette, Colonel of Grenadiers, and Marie Louise Jolie de la Riviere at the Chateau de Chavagnac, in Chavagnac, near La Puyenne Valley, in the province of Auvergne. Lafayette's lineage appears to be one of the oldest in Auvergne. Members of the family were noted for their contempt for danger. His ancestor Gilbert de Lafayette III, a marshal of France, was a companion at arms who in 1429 led Joan of Arc's army in Orleans. Lafayette's great-grandfather was the Comte de la Riviere, until his death in 1770 commander of the Mousquetaires du Roi, or Black Musketeers. King Louis XV is a personal horse guard. According to legend, another ancestor acquired the crown of thorns during the Sixth Crusade. Lafayette's uncle Jacques Roque died on January 18, 
1734 while fighting the Austrians at Milan in the War of the Polish Succession and the Marquis title passed to his brother Michel. Lafayette's father died on 1 August 1759. Michel de Lafayette was struck by a cannonball while fighting a British-led coalition at the Battle of Minden in Westphalia. Lafayette became Marquis and Lord of Chavaniac, but the estate went to his mother. Devastated by the loss of her husband, she went to live in Paris with her father and grandfather. Lafayette was raised by his paternal grandmother, Mme de Chavaniac, who had brought the chateau into the family with her diary. In 1768, when Lafayette was 11, he was summoned to Paris to live with his mother and great-grandfather at the Comtesse apartments in the Luxembourg Palace. The boy was sent to school at the Collège du Plessis, part of the University of Paris, and it was decided that he would carry on the family martial tradition. The Comte, the boy's great-grandfather, enrolled the boy in a program to train future musketeers. Lafayette's mother and her grandfather died on 3 and 24 April 1770 respectively, leaving Lafayette an income of 25,000 livres. Upon the death of an uncle, the 12-year-old Lafayette inherited a handsome yearly income of 120,000 livres. In May 1771, Lafayette was commissioned a sous-lieutenant in the Musketeers. His duties were mostly ceremonial, and included marching in military parades, and presenting himself to King Louis. The next year, Jean-Paul François de Noailles Duc Dying, was looking to marry off some of his five daughters. The young Lafayette, aged 14, seemed a good match for his 12-year-old daughter, Marie-Adrienne Françoise, and the Duc spoke to the boy's guardian to negotiate a deal. However, the arranged marriage was opposed by the duck's wife, who felt the couple, and especially her daughter, were too young. The matter was settled by agreeing not to mention the marriage plans for two years, during which time the two spouses to be would meet from time to time, seemingly accidentally. The scheme worked, the two fell in love and were happy together from the time of their marriage in 1774 until her death in 1807. Departure from France. Finding a cause after the marriage contract was signed in 1773, Lafayette lived with his young wife in his father-in-law's house in Versailles. He continued his education, both at the riding school Versailles and at the prestigious Académie de Versailles. He was given a commission as a lieutenant in the Noailles Dragoons in April 1773, the transfer from the Royal Regiment being done at the request of Lafayette's father-in-law. In 1775, Lafayette took part in his unit's annual training in Metz, where he met Charles-François de Broglie, Marquis de Ruffic the Army of the East's commander. At dinner, both men discussed the ongoing revolt against British rule by Britain's North American colonies. One historiographical perspective suggests that the Marquis was disposed to hate the British for killing his father, and felt that a British defeat would diminish that nation's stature internationally. Another notes that the Marquis had recently become a Freemason, and talk of the rebellion fired his chivalric, and now Masonic, imagination with descriptions of Americans as people fighting for liberty. In September 1775, when Lafayette turned 18, he returned to Paris and received the captaincy in the dragoons he had been promised as a wedding present. In December, his first child, Henri, was born. During these months, Lafayette became convinced that the American Revolution reflected his own beliefs, saying, My heart was dedicated. The year 1776 saw delicate negotiations between American agents, including Silas Dean and Louis XVI and his foreign minister, Charles Comte de Virginie. The king and his minister hoped that by supplying the Americans with arms and officers, they might restore French influence in North America, and exact revenge against Britain for the loss in the Seven Years' War. When Lafayette heard that French officers were being sent to America, he demanded to be among them. He met Dean, and gained inclusion despite his youth. On 7 December 1776, Dean enlisted Lafayette as a major general. 
the plan to send French officers to America came to nothing when the British heard of it and threatened war. Lafayette's father-in-law, de Noailles, scolded the young man and told him to go to London and visit the Marquis de Noailles, the ambassador to Britain and Lafayette's uncle by marriage, which he did in February 1777. In the interim, he did not abandon his plans to go to America. Lafayette was presented to George III and spent three weeks in London society. On his return to France, he went into hiding from his father-in-law, writing to him that he was planning to go to America. De Noailles was furious and convinced Louis to issue a decree forbidding French officers from serving in America, specifically naming Lafayette. Virgin there may have persuaded the king to order Lafayette's arrest, though this is uncertain. Departure for America Lafayette learned that the Continental Congress did not have the money for his voyage, hence, he acquired the sailing ship La Victoire with his own funds. He journeyed to Bordeaux, where La Victoire was being prepared for her trip, and sent word asking for information on his family's reaction. The response, including letters from his wife and other relatives, threw Lafayette into emotional turmoil. Soon after departure, he ordered the ship turned around and returned to Bordeaux, to the frustration of the officers traveling with him. The army commander there ordered Lafayette to report to his father-in-law's regiment in Marseille, de Brolia, who hoped to become a military and political leader in America, met with Lafayette Indiana Bordeaux and convinced him that the government actually wanted him to go. This was not true, though there was considerable public support for Lafayette Indiana Paris, where the American cause was popular. Lafayette wanted to believe it, and pretended to comply with the order to report to Marseille. Going only a few miles east before turning around and returning to his ship, La Victoire set sail for the United States on 20 April 1777. The two-month journey to the New World was marked by seasickness and boredom. The ship's captain intended to stop in the West Indies to sell cargo, but Lafayette, fearful of arrest, bought the cargo to avoid docking at the islands. He landed on North Island near Georgetown, South Carolina, on 13 June 1777.